Welcome to the Firewater Review, a weekly podcast dedicated to whiskey reviews. On this week's episode, we will be sipping on Old Forester 1920 Prohibition Style and Old Forester Statesman in a head-to-head battle. We are also joined by Zeke and John of Dad's Drinking Bourbon this week. I am Seth Brown. I am joined as always by my co-host, Aaron Cave. How's it going, gentlemen's? Good. Very well, thank There's Zeke on his roof. <laughs> it's going very well. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks for coming back on, guys. Yeah, it's been a while. It's great to be here. We've missed you guys. Yeah. Indeed. Zeke, have you missed us or are you just quiet? I, I miss everybody. I, I think I miss days at points. Uh, <laughs> no, the whole dad thing, it's, it's stressful. It, it, it no. can be. Yes, yes, we it were, can be. I, I was telling them before you got on, Zeke, I very much appreciated that they accommodated our time so that we could put our kids down. Well, in the, the texturing that uh, Aaron and I had with John about you guys coming on, John, what, what was that? It was like Saturday you sent us a text, I think? Yeah, it was something like that. It was just like, hey, thank you very much. Um, we'd love to come on, but we, we have to go on at nine your time if that's okay. Yeah. My response back was hashtag dad life. Yeah. Yeah. And that is that is the truth. That is the truth. The one good thing about calling calling us dad's drinking bourbon is people are very understanding. <laughs> well, this is a whole episode of dad's drinking bourbon. We're all dads. Yes, it is. Yeah. Like yes. I was saying earlier, and my, my little boy was giving me a fit tonight too, so it was I I wasn't sure if we were going to get started on time uh, or not. Well, I was still shoving food in my face when Aaron said he was ready. And my kids go down good now. You can just like, hey, it's time to go to bed. And they go to bed. And my son, he just gets up early. That's it. Like it, once he goes to sleep, he's out. That's it. And my daughter, she uh, is still does not sleep good. She'll come in our room. I was telling Aaron earlier that she'll come in and tell my wife my stomach hurts, and then she'll tell me I had a bad dream. Like, okay, which is it? You just want to come in our bedroom. <laughs> and, I mean, she still does it. She still does it, and they're older, so it uh, it doesn't get any better, unfortunately. I'm telling you, I have friends that, that just had babies, and they all, you know, and I'm like, I know you guys are going through it right now, but just wait until they can walk and talk and say no, because, like, you're still in the part where... If you put the baby down, they're going to stay in the same spot. Yeah. And just whenever that ends, it's a new level of tire. Oh, yeah. All right. Aaron and I have a giveaway. Did you guys, did either you, John or Zeke, did you get in, get in on our giveaway? So this, this is going to sound bad, but I always try never to get in other people's giveaways because I feel bad, <laughs> you know, because we're like, you know, we're peers I don't want to take stuff from you guys. We should just trade stuff with each other. Well, well I'm, I'm, I'm glad you didn't, actually, because I got a box already packaged up for you. I'd hate to have to open it up and put more stuff in. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that would have that been, man, I'd, probably, I'd have to get a bigger box and everything, too. Well, we, we appreciate that. I, um, I, I passed on it just because I saw some really good b- bottles going in there, and I thought, ah, this is going to make somebody stay. I'll, I'll, I'll hold back and uh, let somebody else uh, get Christmas early. Yeah. Yeah, so the the giveaway is a Firewater Review Glen Cairn glass from uh, Roundtable Woodworks. He he made those up for us, and then I haven't decided on what all the other samples will be. Uh, I know Aaron said on last week's episode that he was going to throw in a sample of a what was it one thirty five or one thirty nine of it from, was the one thirty nine straight from the barrel. Yeah, and oh man, I think some people thought I was just teasing, but I'm not. I am throwing in a sample of 2014 George T. Stag. Ooh, that is amazing. I haven't decided what the other ones are yet, but I don't tease, yo. <laughs> so that right there is uh, uh, another uh, head-on battle that needs to be done at some point. Stag versus Blanton straight from the barrel. Ooh, that would be a good one. Yeah. Oof. All right. So the winner of this giveaway is Backyard Bourbon. Backyard underscore bourbon. And his name. Congratulations. Yeah. It's Justin Cole. So thanks for entering into that. And Justin, we'll reach out to you 
to get your address. And then yep. we'll, we'll throw in some other samples. We'll surprise you. Yeah. They're not going to be slack bourbons, though. They're not going to be Jim Beam white label. Although everybody oh, needs be, some of that. Yeah, mine will be store picks for sure. Excellent. Yeah, I was thinking mine probably would be too. Anyway, so Justin, we'll reach out to you. We appreciate you entering. And everyone that entered, we'll have another one coming up. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll let this one ride for a little bit. A little break in between. Justin has some good stuff here too. Uh, you know, I see some Weller 12 and... Last night, he had a, an E.H. Taylor ride. Not like I'm stalking you, Justin, but good selection of <laughs> bourbon. <laughs> He's got the, the staple, the 114. Old yeah. Granddad. Yeah. He's got a Russell store pick in there, too. Yeah, he's got some good ones. We had, we had a Russell store pick last night, and I swear it tasted like um, it was like white wine lemon grassy. It was like light and refreshing, and I didn't expect that off of a... Uh, a proof so high, but it was a very, oh, yeah. refer- like it was white wine ish, but it didn't have the dry mouth finish, but it it was crazy. Is that something like you drink on after you mow the yard or? No, like it doesn't taste like grass. It's like lemongrass. <laughs> it's like, you know, it, it tastes like it's a healthy bourbon. I, I don't know how to describe it. It's so like, you drink it after a workout. Yeah. In your Lululemon pants. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm still thinking John had tie before he came over. Is the only reason that came out, but. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, so let's get to what we're we're drinking tonight. Old Forester 1920 Prohibition style and Old Forester Statesman, and I think this was mentioned in our little giveaway, was it not? Or did I? It dream was. That? Okay. Yeah. Uh, someone mentioned on there they well one they wanted to see the whole lineup. Uh, our thoughts on the whole lineup of the Whiskey Rose series. And then they said to do the uh, original batch versus the bottled and bond, and then the Statesman versus the Old Forester 1920. And, you know, we were already planning on doing this up this show anyways, and we were planning on doing the 1920. So figured, hey, let's do the Statesman too and just do a, do the verses because uh, these these two are really good bourbons. And... They both have really great potential to be put next to each other and uh, pitted against each other. The price points are pretty close. Um, the proofs are really different, but um, the Statesman it brings a lot to the table, I think. Yeah, and I hadn't had it up until we had discussed doing this show. And thankfully, one of the, the stores close by me had it on the shelf, so I swung by and, and picked it up. The Old Forester 1920 and the Bottled and Bond that I have, thankfully, I did not finish the 1920 bottle because both of those bottles actually have about a pours left in them. So it was meant for me to do this show. There you go. So what can you tell us about this fantastic lineup, Mr. Cave? Well, I'm just honestly going to talk about the Statesman and the Old Forester 1920 because we've done, what, two other... Uh, old Forester shows. We did the birthday bourbon and we did the bottle and bot already. Yep. Yeah. So I've kind of t- already hit on the whole like history and that kind of stuff. But uh, the Statesman was released this year for the movie, the Kingsman, uh, their second, I guess, sequel to the first Kingsman. Um, uh, old Forester Statesman takes a big part in this movie. So they created this bourbon for it. But uh, the neat thing about this bourbon is uh, the barrels that they take to blend this uh, batch are they take from the hottest uh, spots in the rickhouse. So they find that's pretty much the hottest spots in the rickhouse and take those barrels for, for this blend. So and they say it gives it a little bit more uh, fuller and spicier flavor. Hmm. So I thought that was kind of neat and interesting. And the uh, the 1920, it, that's a really cool story because I, I kind of dug into that a little bit. And uh, so when the when the when Prohibition started, and uh, as most people know, Brown Foreman is one of the only distilleries that kind of was before, during, and after Prohibition. When Prohibition started, uh, everything that they were producing was uh, bottled and bond, had to be sealed, hundred proof, sold you know, legally through doctors or whatever. But uh, at that point in history, they were all distilling uh, at a lower proof 
coming off the still at a lower proof, barreling at a lower proof. So they're saying the 115 proof, if you knew someone that worked at one of those rick houses and they're pulling you a special jar straight from the barrel, it'd probably be coming out about 115 proof. Hmm. So they're saying this is what it was being dumped at, about 115 proof and then being cut to that 100 proof from there. So this is pretty much what you what you'd be getting out of the barrel at that time, that that era, I guess. So that was kind of neat. I would have been a uh, very sick person, I think. Oh yeah. <laughs> I I would have married a doctor. <laughs> there you go. By by the way, I heard the statesman if you drink it it turns you into Channing Tatum. Is that true? Uh I don't know. Zeke kind of looks like Channing Tatum. <laughs> You must have drank a lot of Statesman then. <laughs> I heard Zeke Zeke was more of a Magic Mike Channing Tatum <laughs> than, a, than a Statesman Channing Tatum. He's, He's doing Magic Mike on his roof right now. <laughs> so no one can see it's the best spot ever. <laughs> but no, we we appreciate. I mean, when you you know us, um, and and anybody who knows us knows that when you say head to head, we come running. So thank you for uh, letting us be a part of this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad you guys were able to to come back on, even though it was at the later hour, but I'm glad we could accommodate. And I'm drinking out of my dad's drinking bourbon Glencairn and my firewater review Glencairn. Oh, that's weird. So am I. It's like a a little (laughs) match made in heaven. Mm hmm. I need to get a Firewater review because I'm doing you a dad's have entered, drinking bourbon. You should have entered the giveaway. I know. I know. Or I, I, are, are they available for purchase somewhere? Uh, we could probably make them available for purchase. I could probably just send you one uh, well, with this package I, I got for you. Box. <laughs> you know, now he's got to open the box again, though. No, I'm just going to have to get a bigger box and put the smaller box inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's what's going to happen. <laughs> All right. Do either of you fine gentlemen, uh, John or Channing, have anything to add? Um, I don't. Uh, I would say anything that Old Forester's put out, even uh, even beyond recently, uh, has been stellar to me and uh, hard to find many knocks on it. The whole line just really is good. And you never have to worry about recommending it to anybody as a poor. Yeah, yeah. And and I would just add that the interesting thing about this one, yes, you know, I, I think everybody's kind of excited because this is a, it's a, the Statesman is a special release that's for a movie, right? Tied to a movie, which is, uh, doesn't happen very often. Um, we talk about bourbon and marketing and how the two go hand in hand. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a bourbon come out in, in relation to a movie or, or in conjunction with a movie. Um, that's kind of an interesting thing of it. Uh, also, you know, the whole, I have not had a bad thing to say about the whiskey row series. And I think the interesting thing about this one is prohibition blend or the 1920 is the one that everybody loves from the whiskey row series. So, you know, my preconceived notions going in obviously, or is that, um, I love the 1920. I very much love the 1920 throughout the whole, you know, Whiskey Row series. That's probably my favorite. So it is a tall order to try to knock that off, especially with the proof difference. So I'm I'm kind of mm-hmm. looking forward to this one. Yeah, this. I'm with you. Yeah, I, I would agree with that as well. The the I, I really enjoyed the bottle of Bond too, though. Yeah, we we looked at that when we uh, put all bottled and bonds head to head, and that took a few weeks, but. Uh, <laughs> We, we added that Old Forester bottle and bond, and, and it held its own pretty well. Um, Aaron, did you talk about the age at all? Because the one thing that, that is kind of, I, I couldn't find an age for the 1920, but I did find that the statement, the statesman is four to six years old. Yeah. All, almost all Old Forester are four to six, even the 1920. So that, so they're, they're pretty much even, the reach is even in this yeah, fight. Yeah, the... Yeah, yeah. The only only one that's age stated and over six years is probably is the birthday bourbon. Everything else is has almost always been four to six. And you said the statesman was the one that they aged higher up, right? Uh, yeah. So in the hotter spots in the rickhouse. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I think they've. 
I don't know. I mean, Old Forester's always been a a decent brand, a decent label. But I feel like if they had to redeem themselves, I feel like they kind of have with this Whiskey Row series. Yeah, and I feel like back in the 80s, uh, the Old Foresters were big in the 80s. And I think they kind of lost focus of Old Forester when they started pushing Jack. And uh, when Woodford came out, that was kind of like their you know, their baby and Jack has always been their big, their big Titan. So I I just think they kind of lost a little focus on the old Forester. It's always been okay, but it was just there. And I think them kind of looking at it now and going, Hey, let's, let's push this brand now. I think it's a great thing that they're doing. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to see, seeing what they come out with next. Yeah. And and I don't want to sound shallow, but does anybody feel like since Old Forester got the new packaging, you kind of look at it differently? It's like, um, you know, it's like somebody went and got a makeover and came back and you kind of looked and you're like, oh, what what happened to her? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. she got she she put on a, a nice dress and got a haircut. Yeah. 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 Well, they're all doing it now. You know, Beam, uh, uh, Woodford, well, Woodford's part of Brown Foreman, but they're, I mean, they're all getting facelifts, even yeah. Turkey, you know, switching yeah. styles of their uh, rare breed and, you know, it's going around the table. They're all pulling a she's all that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we need more movie references tonight. I know, <laughs> dad humor movie references that date us. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I would agree with that because the, I th- I feel like their old brand was still kind of stuck in the, the nineties really. Yeah. And I just, the, I mean, it very much has stands out in the shelf a little bit more. That's for sure. All right. Well, if you guys are ready, let's take a break. Let's sip on this stuff and we'll come back and share our notes. What you say? Sounds like a winner. Let's do it. Sounds good. All right. When we return, we will do just that. Welcome back, everybody. In the break, we've been sipping on Old Forester 1920 Prohibition Style and Old Forester Statesman. Per usual format with guests, Aaron will kick it off, and then we'll let John and Zeke be in the middle of the sandwich, and I'll bring up the rear. I'll be the uh, the little heel of the loaf. How about that? If you have me in there, it must be a double-decker meat sandwich. I dig it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aaron, take it away, brother. All right, so um, I'm starting off with the Statesman here, and right off the bat, it's got some great, great spice to it. Uh, a lot of cinnamon and cloves and like cracked pepper and rye notes in there, and then uh, you get hit with big banana notes, uh, almost like a banana cream pie. You know, it pulls out uh, bananas, uh, caramel, a little bit of brown sugar, uh, vanilla, and to get a little, little hints of leather and oak on the palate, it's uh, it's very warm and inviting. It's got a lot of stuff going on here. It's uh, got a lot of cinnamon and pepper up front. I get a lot of cherries on the palate, uh, brown sugar, uh, a little bit of molasses. It's a lot, a uh, little bit of uh, dark chocolate in there. Some nice uh, toasted oak. Get little hints of banana, and uh, a little bit of maple syrup. The finish is medium to long. It's not not super long, but it's it's got a good finish for a 95 proof bourbon. A lot of cinnamon spice there, uh, brown sugar, uh, toasted oak, a little bit of dry leather. Uh, finish kind of gets a little dry on the end. Um, overall, it's it's a solid pour, and uh, I really enjoy it. If it was maybe priced ten dollars lower, this would be an everyday pour for me. But uh, right now, I'm I'm giving it an 88 out of 100. It's it's solid. I really enjoy it. Um, and then putting it against the 1920, uh, you know, the 1920s, uh, 115 proof. But uh, t- I can't believe how different, and, but how similar these two bourbons are. The uh, 1920, you know, on the nose for me, it had a lot of brown sugar and caramel notes, uh, some dark fruits, like almost like uh, plums and cherries. Uh, had some pepper and cinnamon, a little bit of mint in there. 
uh, some chocolate, uh, almost like uh, I get the chocolate and the bananas, so almost like a chocolate covered banana, and then some oak. Uh, the palette was uh, super buttery. Um, uh, some nice caramel apple flavors there, uh, cherry, uh, dark chocolate, kind of nutty. They got those toasted nut nut flavors in there. Uh, cinnamon and clove. Uh, get a little bit of uh, coffee notes and some oak. And then on the finish, it's just pepper, toasted nuts, uh, chocolate leather, and uh, cherry tobacco. Um, I also get almost like a uh, buttery pie crust uh, on the finish as well. These two are just great pours, and it's it's hard to pit them against, against each other because they're so different, but they're so close. And the only thing that really stands out is the proof. And uh, it, everyone knows me, and I'm... I love my high proof stuff, so uh, I give this an 89. So super close. Uh, 88 and 89 are very close, and yeah, uh, the 1920 wins it for me just just by a point, though. That's a close game, say, man. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, they're both. I, I mean, great pours, and like I said, man, ten dollars cheaper. I I would drink this every day. You said you gave it what an eighty nine. Uh, which one? Statesman eighty eight and Old Forester Prohibition style eighty nine. All right, taking notes, but you're just gonna have to do the math on this one. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> gotta get a pen. I'm have to write all this stuff down. Get a calculator. Oh man, yeah, the notes are gonna take me a while. All right, excellent. So I don't know. I'll let y'all do a coin toss on who goes between y'all, John and Zeke. I'll, I'll let Zeke go first. I'm a gentleman. That's very nice of you. <laughs> Thanks. On on that note, uh, I think mine and Aaron's profile aligns a lot closer. So, Seth, I'm probably going to trade you John at some point. Um, <laughs> let me know when we can work that out on the side. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Statesman, um, between the two, honestly, the nose really is uh, almost identical. It's hard to place a whole lot of difference which uh, is the first time I've had both of these side by side. And that definitely surprised me uh, really more than anything going in was uh, if without tasting it, I think if you smelled both, you, I wouldn't be able to tell the two apart Um, on the palate. There is some initial spice to me. And then uh, it just really goes overwhelming uh, banana, like just bombards me with it. It's a, it's a, very novel taste and, and very interesting to me compared to the other old Forrester uh, releases recently in that they're all the same mash. So obviously the, the Rick house placement and or the things they really know how to move around their whiskey, so to speak, and, and to get, you know, different flavor profiles out of what would originate as the stained juice. Um, back in just a little bit of a burn, not bad at all. The banana kind of fades out and you do get some hints of uh, darkness, um, some fruits in there and whatnot. Uh, it doesn't really linger, surprisingly to me. I, I mean, I guess it might be technically the finish, but I guess since it hits so hard on the front end, that banana just stays with me throughout. Uh, it, it's a very pronounced and a unique flavor once it's on the palate. As far as a rating... Um, I'd put this the same as the the eighty seven on the Blantons. I think. Sorry. Oh, I, I was I was hoping you would say that. I, I use that as the litmus. Um, I'm I'm not a big Nashville number two Buffalo Trace fan. I guess at the same time, I've really liked a lot of other Old Forester stuff recently. Uh, to me, this one is just, is just a little too much banana for my own uh, liking. Therefore, I'll, I'll I'll put it with the same of everybody loves. Mashville number two, but for some reason it's not my cup of tea, so I'll, I'll rate them the same. Uh, 1920, as I said, the nose, they're both pretty much the same. Uh, mm. the palette, almost day and night difference. Um, initially, kind of get some spice. Also, I get uh, a little, like, I, I describe it as a fizziness that I seem to find with a lot of old Forester stuff. Um, it, not, it doesn't necessarily taste like uh, you know cola, but it, it it does have a slight fizz um, and just a, a tingling that, uh, to me, I don't know, I feel like I get more flavor out of it for whatever reason. As it moves to the back, uh, definitely a ton of pronounced uh, dark. Literally put any of these in, I think it would be there between dates, um, raisins, cherries, any of those, just a nice dark covered uh, sweet balance. 
uh, it really is uh, just ideal and, and, and well balanced in that. Not a ton of oak really at all. Uh, I think we said it was uh, you know four to six years, so not too much time in there to, to pick up that, which I'm not complaining by any means. Uh, finish lingers some, maybe at the very end of the finish. A little bit more age is, uh, you know, surfacing in the tobacco leather space. But to me, just the the, the dark covered uh, fruits that, that lie in there really uh, dominate for this one in my book. And I would, uh, I'll go ninety on this one. Yeah, nice. Eighty-seven I, 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 and ninety. I, I, I went between 89 and 90, and I went with the 90 simply because it was priced pretty much the same as all the other ones. And so if you're paying the same, there's a little extra bang for the buck here. And, and to me, that, that kicks it up the, from the 89 to 90 on the rating. I can dig it. Oh, yeah. I dig it. All right. So we got an 89 and a 90, or I'm sorry, an 87 and a 90. All right, Johnny boy. I, uh, I agree with those two. All right. <laughs> and no, um so I'm you know, up. I, I, I um, think there's no. not much more I can say to the palate, uh you know, and, and the taste and, and the nose and the finish that, that those two didn't say. Um I will kind of talk more about differentiators just because I like to be a little bit different. Um, you know, obviously the first thing I wanna you know, that that draws me to this is the price, right? You're you're paying fifty five versus sixty, uh fifty five for the statesman, sixty for the nineteen twenty, and you're getting something with the nineteen twenty that's twenty proof higher. So obviously right there, that's a huge differentiator for me with what's essentially the same mash bill of seventy two percent corn, eighteen percent rye and ten percent malt of barley. The the interesting thing for me on this one, guys, I think, is if I have the statesman alone if I, you know, when I had the statesman before tonight, all I got was banana and that was it. You know, I took a sip of it and I'm like, oh my God, banana. And I think the interesting thing for me is I always like to come out of these and learn something. And when I put the two side by side, it really got to get the other spices out in the statesman for me. And I could really, te- you know, sense that, that spice and the oak and the leather and the cinnamon and vanilla and, um, you know, I really agree with with Aaron on the finish. It was a, a medium finish, but it was, you know, I didn't notice before on the Statesman before I really looked at it and did a side-by-side. And, you know, I had sipped it and enjoyed it before, but never really reviewed it, um, that it has that, that dry finish on the end. I don't get, you know, I get the hint of bananas, but I don't get the bananas that I got uh, when I had it on its own and it tasted purely like banana for me. Um, you know, the 1920, I think, is is very similar, but I get a little bit more dark fruit, um, you know, that brown sugar, dark chocolate, things like that, that, you know, it's, it's a very similar taste profile. I just get a little bit of... Uh, more thickness and a little bit more darkness in in that 1920. And for me, I think that's something that's a little more appealing. Um, if I were going to rate these, I think, you know, I I probably have to go 87 for the Statesman and 90 for the 1920. I really think I, I deducted another point from the Statesman because of the price. I think... Um, you know, the novelty of coming out for a movie is nice. The taste, the taste profile is nice. But if you're going to essentially give us the same bourbon uh, that has a 20 proof difference, I I agree wholeheartedly with Aaron. It's probably worth about 10 to 15 dollars less. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, too. I, I do have to say before you go, I, I thought Zeke's review was very, very intelligent and I very much enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's I, I was it was great. It's amazing, you know. You guys do this thing on this show where we take a break and we actually talk about the bourbon. And Zeke and I are doing so much off the hip and doing it live. And it's amazing what what happens when you take a pause and actually <laughs> Uh, I just like the, it, I don't know. It was just the way that it came out, I guess. I don't know. I got a good laugh out of it. <laughs> For people listening, I really did like it. Oh, 
Oh, uh, y'all kill me. All right. My turn? Yeah. Fire away. All right. Well, I'll follow suit with everybody else then. I'll start off with the statesman. Um, obviously, we've all said the bananas. That's there. Uh, but it, it took me a while because I actually opened this bottle today. Uh, and that was, you know, I hadn't had anything out of it until, you know, it had been open for a little bit. But the the first the first drink that I had out of it, I mean, the, the obviously the bananas jumped out. But after a few good swirls, I was getting uh, quite a bit of cherries off of it. And then that kind of led into some fresher cut oak and some black pepper notes popping in. And then after revisiting it, I let the, the glass sit for a little bit and I came back to it and it was just straight clove. It was like all the bananas had disappeared and it was nothing but a glass of clove. So I, I kind of thought that was interesting. The palate on it, again, the first sip out of it after I'd opened the bottle, I, I kind of got worried because I was afraid that it was going to be really thin. It just had this this mouthfeel to it. But then it was like the, the more that I kind of swirled it around, it kind of got a little bit more viscous. I don't – just really kind of bizarre. I don't know. But anyway, after doing that, uh, I got some toasted oak, uh, black pepper, caramel, and uh, more of the, the same stone fruit from the nose, a little bit of that banana popping in there. Uh, and some black pepper. The finish, medium. Uh, there's a bit of a campfire flavor there for me on it. Uh, some toasted marshmallow and uh, a little bit of the black pepper and oak coming back in there and some lighter leather notes uh, coming in on that finish. Uh, it's still, while it was kind of thin, it wasn't as thin as what I first thought it was going to be, but it was still a little bit thin for my liking. Um, and you guys have discussed the, the price on it. I think Aaron and I have discussed the price on it too. I feel like this whole line is about $10 more than where I kind of feel like it should be. And I, I think that goes for every, every bottle, even the original batch, uh, you know, the, the bottled and bond prohibition style and even the Statesman too. Um, so as you guys have mentioned, five bucks more, you get the higher proof. Uh, you know, if you spend a little bit, uh, less actually, you could get the signature series or the bottled and bond, and you know I still think you're coming out ahead on both of those. Um, overall, I gave this one an 86. I'm on the low end. Then to jump into the prohibition style, I'm just going to preface this by saying that I bought this bottle and we had a little uh, fire one night with my neighbor for his birthday after this first came out. And I'm pretty sure I drank most of this bottle that night. Uh, it's, just, it's just a good bottle. Really good. Uh, the nose on this one was, again, a lot of the same, uh, same notes. You get, the, you get some of that ban- uh, banana, not quite as prominent as what it was on the Statesman for me. This one's a lot richer, a lot darker. Uh, you get more of those dark fruits here, caramel, brown sugar, oak, uh, I was getting a little hint of nutmeg and some allspice popping in there and a little bit of chocolate uh, and maybe maybe a pinch of that clove, too, coming in there. I, this one, for me, is just a much more enjoyable nose. Uh, I mean, I like the Statesman, but just I, I prefer it to be a little bit richer, a little bit darker. Uh, and I think that just lends towards a higher proof. Uh, the palate really pays the nose off nicely. It's rich, bold, uh, the sweet and spice really mingle together really well here. I get a lot of uh, burnt sugar, some darker chocolate notes, uh, flavors, uh, caramel, black pepper, and uh, a little bit of uh, peanut poking in there on the the back end of that palate. The finish is medium to long. Uh, More of the same flavors from the palate. Black pepper uh, kicks it off, and then it moves nicely into some sweeter dark chocolate, caramel, uh, burnt sugars coming in there again. Uh, It just... Really consistent and enjoyable pour, and uh, I definitely recommend this one. It's just, again, that, that price. I wish every everything in this line was $10 cheaper. It would be spot on. All of that said, I just finished this bottle, and I'll probably still go buy another one regardless of the price. So apparently they're doing something right. Uh, I gave this one uh, an 88. The only thing, I, I mean, I think the only thing I'd say on the price, Seth, is that you know, for a barrel proof, essentially, you know, at 115, I, I'm okay with the $60 for that. I, I mean, obviously I wish it was cheaper, but 
Um, you know, that's kind of in line. It, it is the the problem is the litmus test for me is seventeen ninety two full is fifty, and you can get that for a store pick. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's probably along the line more of a Knob Creek or a or a four, four Roses. But the difference with those is that those are going to be store picks, and this one isn't. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. But I mean, like I said, even even with the price at sixty bucks, you know, I'm still going to go to the store and buy another one. Now, would I buy it probably more frequently if it were fifty? Sure, but sixty is still not going to stop me. Yeah, yeah. I I just won't have a backup. Right. Right. That's the nice thing about these. Uh, you can always find them on the shelves. Yeah. P- probably a conversation or a, a, a show for, for someone for a later date. The, the trend toward the higher proofs definitely is there. I don't think the market's quite caught up with it. But, uh, I mean, that, it wouldn't surprise me if that's the next uh, wave, quote unquote, is, is more uh, higher proof releases. Is obviously uh, more folks seem to enjoy them more. And even the people that I know that used to tell me six months ago they didn't like a barrel proof. Now they're saying that's all they want to drink. Well, and there's an interesting article, Zeke, on that. Um, I, I I don't know. Was it Fred Minnick who put that out? Um, just the evolution of a, a bourbon enthusiast. And then, you know, you kind of go in and you start drinking everything and then you really get into higher proofs and then you get bored with everything that comes out and then, he was really talking about himself, and then you know you start <laughs> dabbling into rum and things like that. But um, you know, I think at least for Zeke and I, I don't I, I don't want to talk for him, but he you know he was bringing it up. I think I'm interested in what happened to to you folks, but um, at least for Zeke and I, I think very quickly as we've started this journey, we've kind of pushed to uh, uh, pushed aside lower proof bourbons very much in favor of things over a hundred at least. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, I always tell people if they're just getting into bourbon and they want to try it neat to start off with Basil Hayden. I mean, it's, you know, there's not a ton of flavor there, but it's 80 proof. Yeah. But I, I feel awful telling somebody to spend $50 on terrible bourbon. Well, there's that too. But if you want to start trying it neat and you're not ready to dive in head first for, you know, 115 proof, Old Forester 1920, then, you know, try the, try it, you know, or at a bar, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you don't want to pay the 50 bucks for, for a bottle, but with it being 80 proof, you're not really going to find a much lower proof bourbon. Wait, you can't find a much no. lower proof bourbon because if it's below 80, it's not bourbon, but the, it, it, that's always a good starting place to me. But I, I would agree with those statements though, because there's a, a former coworker of mine that was just kind of getting into bourbon and I, I can't remember what it was, but it was a, a barrel proof bourbon and, Oh, it was a uh, 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 handy. He had a handy at a bar and uh, that sounded really bad. He had a Thomas H handy <laughs> at a bar <laughs> 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 and it was actually up there in Nashville. And he, he said he couldn't, he had to get the, the, uh, the bartender to put a couple of cubes of ice in it because he couldn't finish it. His and, bartender was Magic Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Um, but now he's since gotten into you know Stag Juniors and stuff like that already. So it, it's very much a transition. I mean, it's an acquired taste, just like anything else that we do. It, it, it's one of those things you get there, and anything you know in the '90s, certainly in the '80s, just seems thin now. It, it's crazy to me because I I love I love the taste of Dickel Seventeen, but then I find myself getting really upset that it's eighty four proof, mm-hmm. and and I never you know five years ago I wouldn't have got upset over that, but now I I get super upset that I'm like I you know for the money that you spend on these things you know Dickel Seventeen is a a three seventy five that's eighty ninety bucks and I'm like. You know, for the money that we're spending on this, and it's a half bottle, I wish you could have put it at 100 or over. Yeah. But they watered it down to get as most, you know, get the most liquor that they could out of it, so. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, they're trying to push this stuff as far as they can take it. And I, But, I, I mean, I, I would agree with Zeke, though. I mean, I think it's coming because you see a lot of people really talking up the bottled and bonds nowadays. And, I mean, that's the 100-proof threshold. 
And there's a lot of good bottled and bonds out there for, for good prices. And I, you know, they're easily accessible. Again, there's a lot of them with good flavor and it's like, once you get into it, you're like, Oh, okay. You know, you can try, uh, you know, like a wild Turkey at what's the, what's the most recent rare breed? Is it 116 or 112? 116. Yeah, 116. 116. So, yeah, I mean, if you find some of the the previous releases, 112, and you start thinking about it, well, it's only 12 proof difference. Well, then, it, you know, there you go. You're starting to ease into it. That rare yeah. brand is amazing, by the way. The oh, yeah. one, the 116? The 16. Oh, yeah. yeah it's real good. I, haven't I was going to say, yet. since we're talking about a Brown Foreman and, and Bottled and Bond, it, granted, it's Kentucky only, but if you can get the uh, the leader of the early times, it's like twenty seven bucks with tax. It it it's gone quick, man. I promise. Huh. Yeah, I actually yeah, I picked up a bottle of the bottled and bond uh, early times, and it's uh, it's it's not a bad pour for sure. Uh, I'm I'm definitely with you. Yeah, I mean for the price, I I call it drinker of the year, maybe. Really? I mean, what do you, where else could you get a liter for under thirty bucks? That's really good juice. I mean, to me, it is. I'm I'm a Brown Foreman fan, so. In this day and age, what's under thirty bucks? Ancient, ancient age. <laughs> ancient, ancient age. Yeah, you got old Fitz bottled and bond. You have the old Bardstown bottle and bond. Heaven Hill bottled and bond. I mean, all the ones that we've gone through, Zeke. Um, that old Fitz bottled and bond to be a, a fifteen dollar weeder uh, at a seven fifty. That that's that's really good. I say we don't get it down here. No, I have to drive an hour. To go up to Bowling Green and get it. Poor guy. I have to drive four. <laughs> or have family you just have to go down. visit family. Yeah. Or they have to come visit me. <laughs> just have them ship it. Yeah. yeah. So much easier. But uh, it's, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything, but it might be past Aaron's bedtime. <laughs> He's been staying up late yeah. for us. Dad's drinking bourbon is about to be dad's going to bed. Yes. So what 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 we net out here? All right. So Statesman came in at a eighty seven even. Yes. And the nineteen twenty came into came out as a eighty nine point two five. So close. So Statesman is as good as Blanton's. Yes. And the nineteen twenty is almost a ninety. So it's both both great. Great bourbons. Uh, uh, for me, I know you guys do uh, the buy bar pass. Uh, for me, I buy both of them. And honestly, when I sit down for the night, I'm going to have a couple pours. I always, I always try to keep it in the same distillery. So if I'm going to have a Blanton's, I'm going to, you know, grab a straight from the barrel or maybe a Stag Junior or something like that to go after that. So. Why not have a statesman and have a, a prohibition style afterwards? I dig it, man. And then have a nightcap of uh, birthday bourbon, right? Yes. I love it. Uh, of course, there are some, you know, really good brown foreman uh, willets out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, says the guy. Are you still sitting on your roof? No, I had to come inside. The phone was dying. Oh. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up. We've got an 89.25 for Old Forester 1920 and an 87 for Old Forester Statesman. Mr. Dad's Drinking Bourbons, where can folks find you? Well, you can find us on Twitter at Bourbon Dads. You can find us on Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. You can find us on Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Excellent. And Mr. Cave, what about you? All right. So you f- always find me here on the Firewater Review. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter under uh, at Bourbon Cave. Uh, find me on the Sons of Winston Churchill writing reviews for Hassie. And also I write for the Bourbon Zeppelin High Proof and Single Barrel Bourbons. Excellent. I am Seth P. Brown on Instagram and four times a year on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on the show, of course. You can find all of our shows on the ABV Network, abvnetwork.com. You can find them all on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. You can find this show on the YouTubes. 
audio only, no video. Can't see our pretty little faces. Zeke, you know, with his tan, uh, Channing Tatum <laughs> look alike. Um, it's all a lie. It's all a lie. Sorry, you won't be able to see that. Uh, but yes, you can find the show on YouTube. I can also be found occasionally. I uh, need to be on there more on the son of Winston Churchill. That is sowchurchill.blogspot.com. And also, I'd like to give another shout out for Backyard Bourbon. That is Backyard underscore Bourbon, Mr. Justin Cole, and everyone else that entered the giveaway. Uh, and and I forgot to mention it, but give some love to the the Hall of Fame on the Bourbon Zeppelin because I'm uh, I'm out there trying to be a historian to to give some accurate information. But I, I don't know if everyone always reads that one. It's pretty long. Just I read, read it. it. You might learn something. I read it. We do. do you? We read. Yes, it's a good toilet well, thank time. You. Thank you. But no, I do really read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank uh, seriously, <laughs> thank you. I, I don't know if everyone always reads that one. It's not as it's not as flashy as the other ones. Well, I, I honestly didn't know that you were jumping in on the Bourbon Zeppelin train there, and uh, it was the first uh, first issue that you had written. It's like, oh, hey, look, John's in here. So now I have to read it. Well, thank I I read I read your guys' stuff whenever you uh, Seth whenever you're in there, but I always read Aaron's. He had a good one about his uh, MB Rowland pick. That was a that was uh, a great art. Yeah, that was fun. Steve fired me. I've not been in there for a long time. That's all right though. Um, speaking of dads drinking bourbon, you guys still do the Sunday night thing? Sunday or yeah. the occasional Monday, depending on the uh, the schedules. But you know, we, we we try to figure it out at least once a week. There you go. Sometimes if our better halves go away or or if we have some family things going on over the weekend, we may go to a Monday. But we always get on once a week. But you can always find the replay on Facebook the day after. I'll always post it up there for us. Excellent. Yep. Definitely check that out. Well, thanks again for coming on, guys. It was fun. We'll have to do it always again. Always a good time. Always. Agreed. Thank you, guys. And Aaron, go to bed. I think he already we'll did. Do. I think he already did. He's already horizontal. <laughs> All right. Until next time, please drink responsibly and cheers. Cheers indeed. Thanks. Later. Water Review is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. Cheers.